All right, Jamal Nye is here with Jack McGann ahead of his next fight for EFN Fight Nights. How's training gone for your next fight against Levan Makashvili? Um, it's been great, but we're about five and a half weeks away now. I've been training for about six weeks, intense, intensely anyway. I, I always, I'm always in the gym. This is what, I, this is what I do. You know what I mean? This, I don't, I don't know the job or anything like that. So I'm a true professional. I'm in all the time. But the past six weeks, it's been um, the intensity's picked up, and then um, we've got five and a half weeks to go. We've just finished a good sparring session and some top boxers then. But um, but yeah, I can't, I can't wait. Ma March 31st, it is. Um, the man Max is really a UFC veteran. He's, he, he's had some top fights. Um, you know, this is my first fight at featherweight. But the reason we got this fight is because um, he, 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 he fought some guy in. There's some guy in the FN called Vasur. And he's like God over there. He's like the king. He's like, like the best one we got on the roster. Most exciting, most whatever. And um, he's a featherweight and, and, and he got beat. He had about seven fights last year, and I think he was a bit worn out. Fought Marcus really and got beat, but I think it was it was a controversial decision. But I yeah. think Vasil lost the fight instead of Marcus really turning up and, and just beating him up, you know. So I think Vasil threw the fight away a little bit. Um, and they were planning this big rematch. They were going to give Vasil a bit of break, plan this big rematch, and then them two fight again. But unfortunately, Vasil um, Vasil got attacked in the new year and, and, and got hospitalised and he's in a real bad way so he won't be fighting for a good few months so I seen the opportunity and I took the fight with Marcus really. What I can see in your fights, especially over there in Russia, is that you, you have no fear of the ground game which a lot of the matchups they're giving you, it's this traditional it seems like a traditional striker versus grappler matchup but you've shown that you're more than comfortable to, to grapple and with the exchanges in the, in the clinch with the knees and the in the strikes, is that something that you practice day in and day out? No, do you know what? It's funny. I, I've heard a lot of guys with knees in fights, but I don't drill them at all. I think really? it's just um, I do a lot of clinch work in wrestling, and then I just you know, in my mind, in the fight, I'm not looking for punch off or anything. I'm just looking to finish the fight and just just, just, just cause damage with everything I throw at you. So, so um, I just see them them big shots and I throw them. But um, but yeah, uh, as far as it goes, fighting the guys over there. You know, I've had a lot. I've had um, loads of opponents who said, "Yeah, I'm definitely gonna stand with, it. with me. I'm, def I'm definitely gonna stand with them." And then, and then they took one shot, and they've either been knocked out or, or they've just turned to a wrestler. It's happened loads, and it's gonna keep happening. So, yeah. what I do now, um, I spar, I, I, I spar all the time, stand up. But I go into every fight thinking, "Yeah, the second I touch him, it's gonna be a wrestling match, and I'm gonna get up and just try and knock him out again." What made you make that big career move to go to Russia? You know. Um, I was with Bama in England, the, the, the big European show, and looked after me great, but um, I, I, I suffered a, a bit of a shit loss. Um, the DKs No, not the DKs one, the Lapalus one. I was, I was, I was worn out and um, I, I was, she was on it for that fight and Lapalus won, but I had a bit, bit of a break. I, I wanted like three months off because I'd, I'd had six fights that year, but um, it ended up being seven months off and, and then I was, I was going to fight in June in, in Ireland on this big show, then that got cancelled. Um, so then I was like, uh, I was trained up. We found out about three weeks before. I'd, I'd done like 10 weeks training. I wasn't going to not fight. So we, we looked at opportunities on the table. And you know the way I see it, um, fighters shouldn't go backwards. So I could have went on little shows around England just to get a win and, and then keep myself busy. But I thought, no, I'm not going backwards. I've done them little shows. I'm not, I'm not doing them now. So we just looked about. And Russia, luckily for me, um, EFN, it was EFN and it was one of the biggest shows they've ever done because it was EFN 50, which was a milestone um, event for them and it was the fade all on the card in St. Petersburg. Yeah. So I took it against the really top opponents and I knocked them out and the way they treated me and stuff and then I spoke to Bama, they were cool with letting me go and the rest of the history I've been I'm, I'm fighting Russians now. Are you, are you surprised at the amount of praise and, and like you said, the way they're treating you over there? Because you're getting these these grand scale entrances and the, the production value over there is crazy. Has it surprised you at all? Um, no, it, it reminds me of the, the fights what used to be like in Japan, like Pride. They the used Pride to make fights, yeah. they used to make a big thing out the entrances. It, 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 it wasn't just put the music on and walk out and yeah. whatever. So um, I've come out so far as James Bond and um, Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. And when he first told <laughs> me about I was coming out, of, I, I think it's because. The, the, no, no European can go over there and win a fight. Yeah. They all come, get beat and go. You know, so I think I'm, I'm one of the only ones who've, um, who've actually been able to anger them and stay about. So I think that's why I like me. Plus, I think my fighting style is um, 
anyone likes you, I, 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 I come to fight, you know what I mean? I'm not thinking about points, I come, and the bell goes, I'm gonna try and finish the fight, knock it out, or go out swinging, so I, I, don't, I don't see how that doesn't appeal to anyone who wants to watch a fight, you know what I mean? You grew up in Wolves Lair gym, which for me, for me growing up, that was like the, the pinnacle of UK MMA for me growing up, I'd, I'd say, with um, Michael Bisping there and all, all the success that he had an Ultimate Fighter. What was it like growing up around people like Michael Bisping and Rampage Jackson? You know, it, it, it was my dad's gym, so um, I was just like, yeah, my dad's got a gym. I was, I was only a teenager, so yeah. I, I didn't follow MMA at all. Back then, it wasn't like the internet wasn't as big. The only way you could watch the UFC and, and stuff was either buy them on DVD. Yeah. Blockbuster, or um, or watch them on Bravo the next day, and I, I didn't do none of that, so um, I didn't even know about MMA or anything like that. Um, so when all them guys come through the door, I didn't even know who they was, and then they used to stay in our house and stuff, and um, they were just like like like, like me. Um, I just thought that my dad's mates, and then um, but I, I think I never got starstruck or nothing by them because they weren't aware. Because they were just yeah, and, and they were just and they were just I was having every day and stuff, but. Um, I, I was a bit too young to, to probably um, realise what I was in at the time, but, um, but yeah, it, 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 it was good, it was great. Speaking of Starstruck, um, I'm obviously aware that uh, you're good friends with Tom Hardy. Can you explain how that friendship came about? Yeah, just uh, got, got a mutual friend, and then um, I think Tom's into, Tom's into fighting and stuff and into the MMA because of, um, of the Warrior and yeah. stuff. He's probably got an interest in it, yeah. and he probably knows how hard it is to get this fighting, fighting such a hard sport to, to, to choose as your career because you can very easily just go downhill and then you, just, you, you, know, you know, you spent the first few years skins. I've, I've been doing this four years and only just started making money. So um, so I think he probably appreciates someone working hard and, and, and getting somewhere, you know what I mean? So I think that's why he chose to help us a little bit and he just done a good luck video for us. Yeah. And then um, people liked it and then since then, I've um, like I went to the, 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 um, the Premier for Legends and stuff, and seeing him there and I speak to him on, on the phone and stuff, and he, he's um, but that's the same again. It's just like we're just seeing as just Tom, you know, don't yeah. just meet. So, cool, and um, obviously uh, two days ago, the Daily Star released an article on you, say labeling you the next Conor McGregor. I'm quite interested to know how you feel about being labeled um, as the next somebody else and, and not yeah. Jack McGann. No, I think I think they just he knocks people out. I knock people out, and they just yeah. draw on similarities. Um, you know, if anything, it's, it's, it's confidence, isn't it? He is MMA at the minute, so is he someone you look not. up to? Yeah, definitely, definitely. He's got balls. Got, he's got, got, he's got fucking balls the size of anything. And, yeah. and you know, he'll fight anyone. He's the same. He, 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 he'll try. He's not looking for points and whatever. He's, he's a true fighter. He's trying to knock it out. Same yeah. with me. I'm, you know, I'd be disappointed if, if, I, if, if I had to get, if I had to lie on top of someone for 15 minutes and then say I won the fight, I'd, I'd be disappointed, you know. Yeah. Um, so I think he's the same, that, that, that's where the similarity comes from. And um, yeah, I'm not complaining. Who in the sport, whether it's Bellator or UFC, who who do you look at and think, I'd really like to test myself against them right now? Anyone? Any, any of the good, any of the top level strikers. Any of the top level strikers, because you know, I fought. We um, two fights ago, I fought Morad Machev, who's a Dagestani, and he's Habib's training partner. Yeah. And he's been wrestling since he was a baby, and he's literally one of the best, one, one of the best wrestlers in MMA. He's very boring, but yeah. one of the best wrestlers in MMA. And I, know, and I could get, and it's okay. You know, I could, no one ever gets up from underneath him. I got up a good few times, and if he, the only thing what fucked us up was he was so willing to make that fight a boring right, yeah, fight. You know, yeah. so he won and stuff. But um, so I've got no worries about about getting up from underneath people. The, the only thing I want to test myself is with good strikers. So, and, and that's because, you know, I, I, I train for eight weeks and stuff, but I, I, I don't like him. You know, I don't get much I don't get much out of just going in there and not going on stage away. Like, the last fight was a good test, because it was back and forth, and yeah. they're the kind of fights what I like. So, um, as far as you want to fight, just any of the, any of the top strikers. Now, what are, what are your goals for this year? And also, how, how uh, is the is the deal with EFN right now? How many fights does it last? It's a multi-fight deal, so I'll, I'll be fighting with them for the, um, a few fights now. But that, but, you know, contracts change, especially when um, the, the contract reflects your performance. So you know, if you go out 
and you knock a good few out, then you can say to them, hang on, we can't just not affect the performance and we can change. But I'm with them for the foreseeable future, but I'm, I'm happy there. Yeah. I'll, I'll live everywhere that I thought. It's, it, it's great, you know what I mean? I've got to jump on a plane a few days before, but it's no biggie. But um, the fans and everything over there and, and, the, and the culture, but, uh, as soon as I say to people, I'm going to Russia to fight, they say, oh no, why, why are you going there? But it's not, it's just, that's just a load of shit. It, it, it's a great place. So, um, as far as my aims go, what they always are, I just want to. I just want to, um, just want to create fights, just want to create exciting fights, you know, what people want to watch over and over again, and hopefully get, keep, keep adding to my highlight reel, which is already, which is already good, you know, but um, the deal, the deal I've got with them is great, you know, I, I think, as far as, it's definitely, it's definitely the best one I've had, like, financially, and, and, um, and with the roster of fighters they've got, there's plenty of big fights out, for, out there for me as well, plus, um, this next fight is featherweight, so that opens a new door for a whole other load of fights, you know what I mean? So, yeah. You mentioned uh, Pride before. Now, obviously the rules, the unified rules of MMA now are a lot different yeah. to what they were back then. Did you look back, like I'm taking it when there was a moment where you became a fan of MMA, did you watch those fights and kind of think, I, I wish I could have tested myself in those waters with those different rules? I was too young. I was too young. I was only like, you know, like 12 or whatever it was, and people getting boosted in the head. No, it's funny with me. I, I think um, I was always like, my, my dad got me into it because I think he wanted me to look after myself because I live in a rough area, yeah. live poor. But um, and he, he used to say you, you can do something with this, you know. But I thought it was just proud dad wanting me to and just feel blowing smoke. But um, when I started fighting, then I started believing a little bit, and then I thought, um, yeah. But I definitely didn't go into this. I didn't start having me thinking I was going to do it as a job. I thought I was just doing it to, to make my dad happy and whatever. But that obviously changed. Is UFC not the ultimate goal then for you? Are you not bothered if you? Yeah. Are you not actively you know, seeking to get no, there? I could, I could I, you know, you know, at the end of the day, I've got like, my dad's a manager, one of the top managers in the world in MMA, and um, <coughs> he, he, he's, he's helped them with a lot of favors, and they, they, they they've helped him, and he's got a great relationship with, with them all. And then he's got me, who's a, who's a knockout merchant, who's exciting, with a, with a good record. So um, I'm, I'm sellable. I, I, I could have went there a while ago if I really wanted to. If I really wanted to, I could have. But I don't want to, you know, I think I think a lot of fighters, they're, they're dying to get in there, yeah. which I think is funny because loads of fighters are leaving. Why would you want to go and work somewhere where everyone's not happy, do you know yeah. what I mean, just to get UFC on your gloves? No, plus, plus it's, um, I think with, with it getting sold for the four billion, I think I think people took a lot more seriously and there's a lot more money in it now. Yeah, so with the Reebok sponsorship that, that, and everything. No, not so, no, not so much that, I just mean, you know, other f fighters know what they're worth now, yeah. so, you know, they are getting underpaid, so I think a lot more promotions are paying like around EFN and around Asia and stuff, or around the world, they're paying the fighters a lot more, and it's a good, it's a good thing, it's a great thing. Yeah. But the UFC is not the, um, not, it, is, it is probably the end goal. But I'm not in a rush to get there. So, you know, there's plenty of great fights from other places, and and, and, and financially, the EFN are probably on a better deal than I am. Well, no, I'm on a better deal than I am with, with, than I would be with them. So, um, you know, you only, the UFC you only get one chance, and then you cut it easy. Yeah. And I don't want to be one of them people who spend like. Your whole life Three years, four years, yeah. just going up and down in the rankings. I want to get in there and boom, go straight to the top. And if I can't do it, um, that's it. I, 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 I'll swallow it and I'll do something else. But um, I'm not there just to make up the numbers. Well, it's great speaking to you. And best of luck uh, in March.